In this lesson, we're going to work to understand the vertex form of a parabola. Let's begin by looking at the most basic quadratic function that there is, f of x equals x squared, or if you prefer, y equals x squared. This is the most basic quadratic function, and it's called a parent function. All quadratic functions are built off of this parent function. The graph of a quadratic function looks like this. It's called a parabola. You'll notice that the graph has a turning point. That turning point is called the vertex. The vertex is where the graph changes from decreasing to increasing, or vice versa. The vertex form of a parabola is very useful because it allows us to identify the location of the vertex on the graph without actually looking at the picture. To get a better understanding of that, let's get a feel for how this works. Let's begin with our most basic function, f of x equals x squared, and let's transform it a little bit. Let's change that function to f of x equals x squared plus 1. What happens? Well, let's take a look at the graph. When I graph that new function, I notice that the graph has shifted up one space. And so, when I changed my function, f of x equals x squared, to f of x equals x squared plus 1, the parabola shifted up one unit. Let's go back to our basic graph, and what do you suppose would happen if we changed that equation from f of x equals x squared to f of x equals x squared plus 2? If you guessed that the parabola would move up two spaces, you're absolutely correct. Adding 2 to x squared moved the graph two spaces up. Again, we go back to our basic function, and we now will transform it to f of x equals x squared plus 3. What do you predict will happen this time? That's right, the graph will shift up 3 units. So when we add 3 to f of x equals x squared, the graph moves up 3. Now what if we transform it in a slightly different way? What if instead of adding a number, we subtract a number? f of x equals x squared minus 1. What do you predict will happen now? Well, if you predicted that the graph would move down one unit, you are absolutely correct. What if we instead were to look at the function f of x equals x squared minus 3? What do you suppose would happen this time? That's right. The graph moves down three spaces. And what if instead of minus 3, we made our function f of x equals x squared minus 6? What do you think would happen then? If you said the graph would shift down six units, you're absolutely correct. And so, in summary, if we have the function f of x equals x squared, if we add k, our parabola shifts up k units, k is whatever number we have, and if we have f of x equals x squared minus k, the parabola will shift down k units. Now that we've dealt with shifting up and down, let's talk about shifting left and right. We shift left and right when we add or subtract in the parentheses. So in the first exercise here, I have the parent function f of x equals x squared, and I change that to f of x equals x plus 1 squared. What happens now? Make a prediction. Do you think this parabola will move to the left or to the right? Let's look at the graph. It moved to the left one unit. I bet that was the opposite of what you thought it might do. It turns out when we add one inside the parentheses, our graph moves to the left one. What if we were to change that to f of x equals x plus 2 all squared? What direction do you think the parabola will shift now and by how many? the parabola shifts two units to the left. Again, what if we were to change this to f of x equals x plus 5 all squared? Which way will the parabola move this time? That's right, plus 5 will move to the left five units. So when you see a plus 5 inside the parentheses, it's going to move the parabola to the left that many units. What if we subtract inside the parentheses? What if I transform my function f of x equals x squared into f of x equals x minus 1 all squared? Which way will the parabola move now? The parabola moves one unit to the right. So subtracting 1 inside the parentheses had the opposite effect of what we might have thought. It moved us one unit to the right. 
what if we change that function to f of x equals x minus 3 squared? Which way do you think the parabola will move this time? That's right, it moves to the right 3 units. And what if we have the function f of x equals x minus 5 all squared? Which way do you think the parabola will move and by how much? If you said to the right 5 units, you're absolutely correct. So in summary, if we add h on the inside, our parabola shifts h units to the left. And if we subtract h on the inside of the parentheses, the parabola moves h units to the right. Now let's combine this knowledge to identify the vertex of a parabola. Suppose we have the function f of x equals x squared plus 5. We're asked to state the coordinates of the vertex. We know that our parent function begins at the origin 0, 0. And then we have to look at the shift, left and right, or up and down we see that we have plus 5 on the outside of the parentheses. That means our graph would move up 5 units. So we take our parent function and shift it up 5 units. The coordinates of the turning point are 0, 5. That's the location of the vertex. Here's an exercise for you to try. Can you identify the coordinates of the vertex for the function f of x equals x squared minus 4? Remember, we start with the parent function, with the vertex at the origin, and then identify the shift. Please pause the video here, see if you can find the coordinates of the vertex, and then come back. Let's see how you did. We identify the shift. We have minus 4 on the outside in our function, and therefore our parabola will shift down 4 units. We move our function down 4, and we see that we have a vertex at the point 0, comma, negative 4. How about this one? f of x equals x plus 6 squared. First we have to identify the shift. We notice that we have plus 6 inside the parentheses. That means our parabola will shift 6 units to the left. The coordinates of the vertex are negative 6, comma, 0. How about this one? f of x equals x minus 3 squared. Can you find the coordinates of the vertex? We begin with our parent function. Let's see if you can. Pause the video here and take a moment. Let's see how you did. We begin by identifying the shift. We have a minus 3 in the parentheses, which means we'll go to the right 3. When we move our parabola to the right 3, we see the coordinates of our vertex are at the point 3, comma, 0. And now we can look at some more complicated problems. How about this function, f of x equals x plus 4 all squared, plus 2? Once again, we begin with our parent function with the vertex at the origin, 0, 0. And we identify the numbers that give us our shift. We have a plus 4 inside the parentheses and a plus 2 on the outside. The plus 4 on the inside tells us that our parabola will move left 4 units. And the plus 2 on the outside tells us that our parabola will move up 2 units. We move our parabola left 4 and up 2. And now we can identify the coordinates of the vertex. The vertex is at the point negative 4, comma, 2. How about this one? Can you identify the turning point or the vertex of this parabola? Pause the video here and let's see how you do. We begin by looking at the shift. We see that we have a minus 3 in the parentheses and a plus 1 on the outside. The minus 3 inside tells us we're going to shift right 3. The plus 1 up 1. We shift our parabola right 3 and up 1 unit giving us the coordinates of the vertex 3, comma, 1. Here's another one for you to try. Can you identify the coordinates of the vertex for this function? Pause the video here and return when you've finished. As always, we start knowing that our parent function begins at the origin. We need to identify the shift. We have a plus 4 in the parentheses, which tells us we'll go left 4, and a minus 3 on the outside, which tells us we'll go down 3. We shift our function left 4 and down 3 units. That gives us the coordinates of the vertex, 
negative 4, negative 3. And now you know everything you need to know in order to understand the vertex form of a parabola. Remember, you can learn more about quadratic functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.